How would you like to travel around the world, date supermodels, and get underwear thrown at you while you perform on stage? Well, my name is Brandon, and today I'm gonna teach you how to become a rock star. Wait, what? Hold on a second. A rock star landlord? I thought this was a video about becoming a music rock star, not a landlord. Okay, somebody screwed up the teleprompter once again, Cheryl. Let's take that back to the beginning. <laughs> How would you like to work 168 hours a week, never travel anywhere, and spend your days dealing with ungrateful, entitled, and the lowest common denominator of public society? Well, my name is Brandon, author of the book on rental property investing and the book on managing rental properties. And today I wanna to share with you my top tips for avoiding that lifestyle while still owning rental properties. That's right, you can still be a rock star landlord without being a slumlord. And today I wanna to offer six tips for doing that. Let's get to it. All right, number one, treat landlording as a business. Look. You don't see Howard Schultz making lattes, Mark Cuban playing one-on-one -on -one with Shaq, or Donald Trump swinging a hammer, right? Why? Well, very simple. These people own and run businesses. Now, if you own rental properties, you also run a business. So honestly, start acting like it. Take it seriously. Build processes and systems that you can follow. Be consistent. Hire stuff out, be organized, know your numbers, stop getting so emotional about everything. It's a business and it's time you started acting like it. All right, tip number two, provide a great home. Now, if you want to attract weird tenants, just provide a weird home, you got it. But if you want to have great tenants, then provide a great home. Fix the property upright before a tenant moves in. And in the words of my fellow and fellow landlord and friend, Darren Sager, make your home tenant proof by using materials that won't break down quickly. Your property doesn't need to look like Buckingham Palace, but it should be clean, durable, and better than average because that's exactly the kind of tenant you want to attract. All right, let's get on to number three. Get to know your fair housing laws. If you really enjoy lawsuits and paying big bucks to bad tenants, ignore this next tip. But if you want to remain legal and avoid being called a lot of terrible names in the newspaper, listen up. You need to learn what your fair housing laws are. Fair housing laws exist on a federal, state, and local level and are designed to make sure that discrimination doesn't take place against a protected class. Protected classes include race, color, religion, sex, familial status, handicap, and national origin, and potentially more depending on your local laws. While it seems pretty obvious on the surface, sometimes it can be easy to discriminate and not even notice. For example, yeah, this property is on the second floor, so it's probably not the ideal one for you since you do have that wheelchair. Or, you know, I have another property that might suit you a little better since this is a high crime area and you're a single woman. Or, it's a small studio apartment, so obviously we can't allow seven kids to live there. Each of these could get you in hot water, so be sure to review your local, state, and federal fair housing laws to stay out of it. Okay, enough of that, let's move on to number four, wait and don't wait for a great tenant. I know, that's kind of a weird tip, right? Wait and don't wait, but hear me out. One of the best tips I ever received when I bought my very first rental property almost 10 years ago was this. Somebody told me, wait for a great tenant. It's better to have a property vacant longer than to rent to somebody who will drive you crazy or you might have to evict later. And I love that advice, it's fantastic, but I want to amend it a little bit. Don't just wait for a great tenant to find you. You have to go out and find them. In other words, take your marketing efforts seriously so you have an endless supply of tenants calling to rent your property. Then pick a great tenant and move them in. Now, speaking of finding a great tenant, tip number five, take your tenant screening seriously. Tenant screening is one of the most important jobs of a landlord. Screening is the process that you go through to make sure the tenant has, that has applied is going to be the ideal tenant that you want. Because Let's be honest, people often lie. Screening is how you verify that they're telling the truth. When screening tenants, be sure to do the following. A, run a background. 
make sure that they aren't evil minions. B, check their employment status and verify their income to make sure they actually make enough money. And C, talk with their previous landlords because how they've been in the past is how they are going to be in the future. Okay, on to the last tip, number six. Train your tenant from day one. Look, no child is born knowing how to drive a car. You have to train them to be great drivers, right? In the same way, you must train your tenants to be great tenants. It doesn't come naturally to most, as weird as that might sound. Training involves two aspects. First, you must establish rules and guidelines up front. I mean, how do they know that blasting punk rock music at 2 a.m. is bad if you don't tell them? This is why a solid lease agreement is so vital and important. And second, you must enact punishment if they break the rules. And no, I'm not talking about beating your tenant with a leather whip. Although sometimes you may feel like you wanna do that. I'm talking about penalties when they break the rules. If they're late on the rent, charge a late fee. If they move in a pit bull into your no pet rental, make them give it away or face eviction. I know you're the big mean landlord, but it has to be that way. And I know it feels weird being the enforcer, but rules benefit everyone, not just you, but everyone. And by being firm but fair, you're treating them with respect, you're gonna have a long-term business relationship. Of course, being firm doesn't mean you can't be a good person either. Your tenant will respect you and stay for years and years if you treat them with respect that they deserve. Address maintenance concerns quickly, send a card at the holidays, and, and follow the golden rule. Treat tenants the way that you would want to be treated. Now, by following these six tips I talked about today, you'll find that landlording doesn't have to be a drag. In fact, being a landlord can be one of the most rewarding and profitable businesses that you can run if you're willing to do it right. Now, if you enjoyed this video today, I'd love you to do a few quick things for me. First of all, could you click the little thumbs up button on the YouTube player, letting YouTube know that you love it, and then they'll show it to more people in the future. A little thumbs up button there. Secondly, Subscribe to our YouTube channel where we post new videos every week, sometimes multiple videos with the best real estate investing content in the galaxy. And third, pick up a copy of both the book on rental property investing and the book on managing rental properties together for one low price at biggerpockets.com forward slash. I will see you around the Bigger Pockets community. My name is Brandon, signing off.